Hello. So, are you thinking of becoming a gas engineer, going down the uh, managed learning program route, otherwise known as a fast track course? If you are, then uh, you need to hear what I have to say. Um, so, a few couple of years ago, I used to work as a granite installer, but due to the heavy lifting and dodgy knee, dodgy wrist, dodgy back, um, I decided to leave and have a career change. So, without giving it much thought, I thought, jump into gas engineer. I did speak to a few people about it and uh, seemed like the right thing to do at the time. So I decided to take the plunge and I went down the route of an MLP. Um, I don't have time on my side, especially having a family to support and provide for. So I couldn't go down the apprenticeship route as that takes a few years. So I went down the fast track route um, and if you're someone who's thinking of going down that route and becoming a gas engineer then there's a few things that I need to that I'd like you to know before you make that decision um, everything I'm about to say is based on my own experiences uh, and what I've been through so I've now been qualified coming up to two years um, the first thing that you need to be aware of when it comes to an MLP is the cost. So the cost of the course itself is about six to seven thousand pounds at most training places. But that's just for the course, that's just what you pay to the training academy. What you've got to take into consideration is it's probably going to take about six months to do because you've got your classroom time which is about nine weeks in total and then you've got to do your portfolio as well which is all your practical work so you're talking about six months so for six months you've got to be prepared that you're not going to make any money so you've got to figure out a way of still paying your bills um, for the next six months uh, I was quite fortunate at the time because I was uh, working for a pharmacy doing some deliveries and it was kind of on and off work I could cover my hours when you know whenever I could so they were quite flexible so it was alright for me um, not too bad but it's still a struggle so that's one thing then that's just for, for the course itself for £67,000 for the course six months you're not earning anything if when you finish the course you decide to go self-employed then you've got to think about tools Gas, just your gas safe registration and your gas analyzer which you have to have um, that you're talking minimum a thousand pounds just for that and then forget all your spanners and wrenches and screwdrivers and you know multimeter if you're doing boiler repairs and all sorts of stuff you need so that's one aspect of it then comes your portfolio so before I started the course, uh, before I even put my deposit down for the course, I spoke to quite a few gas engineers and they all promised me the world that, yep, yeah, no problem, when you start, we will help you do your portfolio, you can tag along with us, we'll show you the ropes. However, when the time actually came to do it, they all vanished. Nobody would answer the phone, nobody wanted to show you anything. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you a call when I've got something and you never hear back from it. And I've heard this a lot from a lot of people that this is a problem that they have. Um, the training centres, they can sometimes help find somebody for you. But again, it's the same issue when you find someone, you know, they just let you down. They'll be like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll give you a call when I've got something and you'll never hear from them. And I can kind of see it from the gas engineer's point of view as well, you know, especially if you're going to be working in the same area as they are, you know, they're going to, you're going to be stepping on their toes. So they wouldn't want to show you, they wouldn't want to give you their secrets and trade secrets away. 
which you can kind of understand that from their, you know, from their perspective. So that's another, you know, downfall that you're going to come across. And it's, you know, I had to literally fight this, you know, I had to phone around loads of people every day. Have you got any work today? Can I come and tag along? And, you know, that was the only way I managed to get my um, portfolio done in the end. But it is quite stressful. And then after your portfolio, after your exams, once you've qualified, you've got your qualification, um, now it's looking for work. This is where you're going to have a big problem because you're going to be applying for jobs, but you've got no experience. The portfolio work you've done isn't really classed as experience. So you've literally got no experience. And the course itself, you know, if you think you're going to be going on the course and you're going to be learning, you know, how to solder and how to pipe bend and how to fix it, that's not going to happen. The course is solely about regulations, health and safety, and how to work safely. 95% or 90% of the course is classroom based. Um, you'll do a little bit of practical work in the workshop, but again, that's all centered around working safely. So once you finish your course, now you've got to look for a job. Again, most people, they want a minimum, a minimum of two years experience. Now, there are some places that might take a chance on you and you might get a job mainly working for social housing. Um, the pay is not going to be good, but it's a way of you getting your foot in the door, getting some experience and learning as a new gas engineer while getting paid. Um, so, but again, you know, it's not ideal and it's, you know, there's a lot of people that you'll see, even online, you can find, um, you know, stories of so many people who have done the course, they've spent all the time, spent all the money and eventually they've ended up going back to what they used to do or they've just gone into a completely different career. So these are some things that you need to be aware of. Um, you can go self-employed, which is what I ended up doing eventually, um, but that is tough. You're literally throwing yourself in a deep end and it is really, really stressful. Um, it is really stressful. Um, because you don't have the experience, you don't really know what you're doing. Fortunately, I had a couple of people there with me who have supported me and still continue to support me. Whenever I found, you know, uh, I was stuck in the dead end, I'd give them a call and they'd come out and help me. Um, also, I've been on all the boiler manufacturer courses. I'm still going on courses, um, constantly watching YouTube videos. Uh, I've even got some, um, like, um, boiler repair manuals. There's a few few guys out there on YouTube and on social media who are doing some really good things and helping out gas engineers. People like uh, boilers to bathrooms, uh, advanced uh, boiler training. Then you've got CP, uh, CP utility. Uh, um, what's he called? Um, the plumbing doctor from Birmingham. Um, so you've got guys like this who are really good. You know, if you watch their videos, you can actually learn quite a lot from watching YouTube and things like that but eventually you've got to go out there on your own and you're not gonna have you know these people with you when you're out there so it can get really stressful you know I've cocked up a few times major cock ups but eventually you learn from your mistakes so it is now I'm at now I'm now at a position where I am um, getting there doing good a lot less mistakes um, but the main thing is working safely, um, which is what this training program is there to help you with. Also, one last thing, if you are going to go and part with thousands of pounds and give it to a training centre, do your research on the training centre itself. I've heard a lot of horror stories about training centres. Um, the one I used was M65 Gas in Colm near Burnley and they were fantastic, absolutely amazing. All the lads there, really sound. The trainer was top, top quality. He explained everything in a way that was very easy to understand. Um, but yeah, like I said, there are some horror stories out there. You can find it online. There's a lot of horror stories out there about other training centers. So just be aware of these things. Anyway, um, I will be making some more videos about my journey or my experiences from 
when I started to where I'm at now and going forward uh, what I'm doing so hit a like and subscribe